Um, let's, let's jump into it. So our design competition, it has two major components. The first one is our design challenge focused around our, this year's theme, which we've learned is sustainability. Uh, the second is our problem solving through our engineering process. So this is kind of like our first pre-competition workshop. We're gonna have a second one focused around the engineering process so that our students that want to compete this year have the tools ahead of our competition um, and they're ready to kind of hit the ground running uh, when we start. The competition is 10 weeks long. So uh, we will start in December. Um, teams will be made out of two to four students. Uh, the competition is open to all six through 12th graders uh, on Hawaii Island. Um, and each team will be guided by a team coordinator. So this is uh, an adult who uh, is either a teacher, a community educator, a parent, someone that will be available throughout the competition to help the team um, throughout their uh, workshops and their um, problem solving. Um, let's see here. I'm going to jump to a checklist that will go out um, to both students and then also to team coordinators. Let's see here. So this is a team checklist. It uh, breaks down our competition into uh, a rough schedule. Uh, right now, what we're doing is learning. We're learning about our theme. We're learning about how we're going to kind of uh, approach our problem solving. Uh, we're also looking for team members. We're looking for team coordinators, people who can support us through um, the design competition. Come December, um, our, our registration deadline is December 3rd. This is when uh, you'll officially tell us who your team is, who your team coordinators are, and we'll start the competition. Um, we'll start off with a problem solving workshop um, and keep developing that until January is when we'll um, submit those uh, problem statements to the qualifying round. Um, and then through January to February is when we're developing um, uh, your, uh, your problem solving. You'll put together presentations, you'll put together an engineering notebook um, to submit uh, through final uh, presentations, which will happen in March. Um, let's see here. And stop me if you have any questions. Uh, why? Why would you want to be part of Fish Tank? Um, I say several reasons. One, to grow your knowledge. I think you're here because you're interested in STEM. You're interested in learning from experts who are working in the world of sustainability, who are here locally making changes. Um, I think you want to um, learn from, from all of those people. Um, you could also want to sharpen your skills. Uh, if you're interested in engineering, um, become a better um, observer, analyzer, um, note taker, or even a leader, or, or learn how to work uh, in a team. Uh, that's a reason why you could be here. Um, another one is possibly to win cash prizes. I'm going to share with you our website. So this year's prizes, um, there are many. Uh, there are three primary prizes, first, second, and third place. Um, the first place gets $2,000. Uh, second is 1500000 and or $1,500. And third place is a thousand. We also have uh, category prizes uh, for the most inspirational project, uh, the best idea, best engineering notebook, uh, people's awards, uh, and also best team. Uh, so there are uh, lots of opportunities to, to win in this competition. Okay, how to hey, sign Maria? up? Oh, yes. Sorry, if you go back to the... Um... And Brittany, thanks for sharing that link to Miro. Um, that's in the chat for the, anybody interested in using that tool that she used to map out the, uh, you know, the, the the dependencies. But if you could, um, Maria, if you can go back to this, uh, the uh, checklist. Um, oh, yeah. You made mention of um, you made mention of uh, well, there there will be the opportunity to connect with uh, local resources, right? Subject matter yeah. experts. And Gail, did you want to mention briefly what you're putting together? I think we're talking about putting a web page with links to um, 
local experts? Certainly. Noel and I are, are already engaged with sustainability experts here in Hawaii. And we're actually enjoying our time in interviewing with them and recording a little bit of their expertise, um, what they're doing and utilizing their talents in currently. And so these will be featured on our website. So as you decide what problem you wanna delve into, you can tap into your fish tank resource on our website and maybe take a look at who might be a good source of information. Um, you can ask questions that can lead you, um, give you a clearer view of, of things. And then we just hope that this will be a very good uh, resource to the, the wide variety of uh, experts that are needed in sustainability. So we're having a fun time putting it together. You'll see it shortly on our website. Thank you. Thanks, Gil. So I see we have some questions through the chat, Tori and Gavin. Yes, this is an all virtual competition. Uh, so there'll be workshops scheduled uh, between well, now and, and um, February. We'll have uh, checkpoints to meet with the teams, maybe connect them with the mentors, make sure we're on track. There's about three to four working weeks in between of those deadlines. Um, when things are, when problem statements are going to be due, when documents are going to be due, and then when final presentation um, uh, will be due. There, there is one um, uh, one thing to highlight, though the the uh, the final event. I think you have it at the very bottom. Is actually going to be a live okay. event, so that should be a lot of fun. Um, did you want to also um, mention that, Maria? Yes. What our expectations are. For the live event, yes, uh, we'll be hosting it at UH Hilo. Um, so there will be qualification um, points throughout the competition. And so uh, for the presentation, we'll select a, uh, a handful uh, of presenters uh, or student teams to present that day um, in front of a live audience. Um, and then we'll follow it up with our award ceremony. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so most of it, like 95% will be, 90, 98% will be um, virtual, but then the very tail end will be a live celebration, which which should be a lot of fun. Yeah, we, okay, questions. How many people are there? How many teams? So our goal is to get 20 teams to compete this year um, in ranging between two to four students to a team. Um, let me describe the notebook. Uh, the engineering notebook, um, is uh, a tool for every, uh, each student will have an engineering notebook um, to record your observations, your analysis, um, your plan. Um, and that will be part of your submission for uh, the competition. Would someone like to expand our, our, no our notebook expert? Um, she'll be running our next workshop, engineering uh, process, and, and you'll get more information about um, um, how to prepare this notebook once we get your registrations. Yeah, so the, the key is to register, uh, to indicate your, your interest, uh, register. Once once you get through the, pr the process, we'll, we'll give you all the information, including notebooks uh, that will be uh, used by the team. Yes, thank you. Thank there you, was Lisa. another question about the uh, schedule, the work workshop schedule, because mm -hmm. it already been set up. Yes, so we have um, a definite dates. Our next workshop for engineering process is going to be November 19th. Our registration deadline is December 3rd. And this information will be sent out to you um, also. Our... Yeah, and I want to want to emphasize Lisa's comment. So um, what uh, over the past two uh, fish tanks, especially the last one, we, we were able to uh, gather quite a bit of informa information. And what we're going to be able to do is uh, have this information available online. And also, uh, so as a result, we have fewer workshops. Uh, if you recall, last time we had like every every Saturday for a few, you know, for, for a, a cycle, there were um, regular meetings. And uh, what we're now thinking is that uh, we can do better by limiting the number, but also giving access to the information uh, online. So, uh, so that's our strategy uh, this time around. 
Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Or uh, um, Maria, I, I just want to make sure you covered all you wanted to cover as well. Mm -hmm. Anything uh, else? The dates were the last part. Uh, and again, we'll send this out um, so everyone knows exactly when those, those dates are coming. Save the date for November 19th, probably is the um, upcoming event to, to attend. So one question that um, someone might have is if they're interested in signing up today, mm -hmm. uh, how, how do they go about that? Well, let me show you. Okay. Uh, visit. Um, actually, let me, if you're wanting to register for the competition today, I'm going to, this is our registration form. I'm going to put this in the chat. So uh, this form are for teams who, for students who already know that they have a team or um, they're not sure, uh, or if they don't have a team or a team corner and want help finding one. Uh, we'll send this out as an email also. Um, but here you'll you'll tell us your contact information, um, your team court team information, team corner information, um, and we'll get you uh, the documents to to get started uh, come December. We also, if you're not sure but still kind of interested in thinking about it, you can visit our Next Tech website, our Fish Tank Design Competition landing page. Some information, our theme, what our prizes are. Um, here are the key dates there, and then apply for, for information because we'll be sending out a lot of things from now until the, uh, the launch day in December. Uh, there was a good question in the chat about the team budget, and I think uh, oh. Auntie Gail is going to respond to that. I, I, I think it's, well, is it 250? Sorry for the background noise, everyone, but uh, the budget per team is $250. So that helps you to cover incidentals that are um, aligned with your experiments and building of your prototypes. So you'll see it in the details that Maria sent. Okay. Any other questions? Thanks, Lisa. Your response so you is have in the chat. So are there any technical requirements? I, I think you have that um, mentioned there, right? So right wanna, here. Yeah. So you want to make sure you have access to high speed internet connection. You have a laptop or a desktop that you can work on. A non DOE Gmail account is where we'll send um, information regarding the competition and then be able to um, join us via Zoom. Those are our technical requirements. Excellent. Any other questions? Okay, we're uh, bumping up on the uh, the end of our, our event here. Um, I know we have one more video to share. It's not that long. And I know if, if anyone has to leave uh, because of a conflict, feel free to, but uh, Maria, what do you think about playing that uh, just to wrap us up? I think that's a great idea. It's perfect. And, and before we do that, though, if there if anyone has any questions about Fish Tank, um, where should they go? Should they, they should just go, go yeah. to, oh, I will go to the website in the chat. Oh, where am I? Our, nope, oh. <laughs> I'll get it here. Uh, when you go to our next step website, you'll go to STEM events at the top. That drop down window, go to events, and it'll lead you to this link here. Oh gosh, I'm not getting it, guys. <laughs> yeah, um, there's also uh, our email address, right? Admin, mm -hmm. admin at nexttechhawaii.org. And we can send this out to uh, in an email to everybody who's participated today. We'll we'll also send an email uh, blast out to um, our next tech uh, mailing list 
Uh, so um, yeah, so if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to us and we'll we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Slots are limited. There are uh, 20 teams as was, was mentioned. So uh, please, um, you know, feel free to, uh, or if you're even remotely interested, apply. Uh, with that, I think we should go ahead and uh, share the, the video and we'll wrap up. Right. Thank you. You're just one kid. What can you do to help fix global warming? There is so much kids like you can do to help fight climate change. After all, this is your planet and it is the only one that we've got. First of all, don't ever let anyone tell you that just because you're a kid, you can't make a difference. Because you can. Will you be the person who discovers how to make airplanes carbon neutral? Sarah Volz was just 17 when she won Intel's big science fair for figuring out a more efficient way to turn algae, that green stuff that grows in ponds, into biofuel. She ran her experiment in her room at home under her bed. And Evie Sobchak was only in eighth grade when she started to build her own project to convert algae to biofuel. It took her four years of experimenting in the garage, but she won one of the top prizes at the Intel Science Fair too. And today, companies are turning algae-based biofuel the kinds that Sarah and Evie created into jet fuel for airplanes. Who wouldn't want to fly across the ocean on a plane fueled by algae? I know I would. Will you work with governments like Delaney Reynolds from Florida, who serves on the Rockefeller Foundation's 100 Resilient Cities Committee for Miami-Dade County? She also helped pass a new law that requires all the new homes in South Miami to install solar panels. Sarah, Evie, and Delany are all kids, and they are doing amazing things. So you've decided that you want to do something. How do you get started? There are so many ways to help. You could plan a cool experiment in your basement right now, or you could work with your school principal to figure out how to cut your school's carbon footprint. Or you could start talking to your local officials about changing the way things are done in your city or state or province. I can't give you a one-size-fits-all formula because every person's different. We all have our own strengths and abilities and we all live in different places. I would have loved to be one of those amazing teens turning algae into energy. But hands-on science experiments where you have to be really detailed and careful with tiny pieces of equipment and exact amounts of chemicals have never been my strength. Yes, I know I'm a scientist, but my experiments don't use test tubes. I run my climate models on these giant supercomputers and I'm really good at programming them. And my computer models tell us important things, like how climate's gonna change in the places where we live and what we can do to prepare for future risks from hurricanes, floods, and heat waves. I also like talking to people about why climate change matters, so I tend to do that a lot. And I like using the internet to reach people, so I make these videos. What do you enjoy doing? What are you good at? Spend some time thinking about that, maybe even jot it down. And then talk to your family, your friends, even your teachers to figure out, how can I use these skills and abilities and interests that I have to make a difference? Even though there's no formula, I do have a couple of specific suggestions of what you could do. The first one is to work on reducing the amount of energy that we use and the amount of waste that we produce and helping our family or our school or our community do that too. This means a lot of little things, like changing out the older inefficient light bulbs for new LEDs, or refilling our water bottles instead of using disposable ones, because small steps matter. Eating lower down the food chain, less meat, more veggies. Opening the windows instead of running the air conditioner. And it might also mean some big things too. Could you apply for money to put solar panels on the roof of your school? Or even if you live in a warm climate, just paint the roof white to save on air conditioning. Greenschools.net is a great resource for learning how to green your school and save money at the same time. In the last 10 years, Brevard Public Schools in Florida combined all kinds of big and little steps to save four and a half million dollars a year. That is a lot of money. The second thing we can do is talk to people about climate change. 
because one of the biggest problems we have is that we don't think it matters or that there's anything we can do about it. So I'm inspired by people like 14-year-old Hannah Alper, who's from Toronto, like me. Since she was nine years old, she's been blogging about the environment and climate change and social justice on her website, callmehanna.ca. She says, no matter how young you are, you can make a difference and you can be the change. The third thing we can do is figure out cool new ways to fix the problem. Manasa Mendu from Ohio was 13 when she invented a $5 machine to turn sunlight, wind, and rain into energy. Austin Wang from Vancouver won the Intel Science Fair just last year for his microbial fuel cells that convert sewage into fuel. And the Environmental Club at Lester Vaughn Secondary School in Barbados went one step further. Not only did they create their own biodiesel fuel from used vegetable oil, but then they went and sold it to people in their community. Lastly, the fourth thing we can do is lead the way. Just because you're a kid doesn't mean you don't have a voice. Did you know that 21 kids are suing the US federal government for their right to a stable climate? The case is going to trial this year. Here's why Avery McRae from Oregon joined the lawsuit. She says, I want my government to understand that climate change is real, changes are happening right now, and things aren't going to get better on their own. Climate change should be the government's first priority. We can all make a difference in the places where we live. Cutting our carbon footprint, raising awareness, discovering cool new things, and standing up for what we know is important. The question isn't whether you can make a difference. You can. The only question is how.